So, Bernard, if we were doing what Britain's done, we'd have an expert inquiry. They have... We've now knocked back three of them, one in South Australia, one in Victoria and one in the federal parliament. If we were doing what Britain is doing and the reasons why they're shutting down this affirmation model at Tavistock, we'd actually be shutting down the, the unit at the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne who also believes in this affirmation model. I mean, am, am I, you know, drawing a wrong well, parallel there? Is that a fair, fair comment? Well, Peter, the, the medicine that's being given, the puberty blockers, is exactly the same. The weak evidence base is shared internationally. It's exactly the same. You know, so there ought to be difficult questions for our health ministers and our hospitals to answer. If these drugs are no longer safe to be given to young people in England, why are they safe to be given to young people in Australia? Why can't we have an inquiry? I mean, we've got medicos, we've got psychiatrists and others are coming out, Bernard, who are saying, if you're so sure you're right, let's have a proper inquiry and defend that position. Why, why are we not even able to have a proper medical expert inquiry? I think one reason, Peter, is that things are polarised. These medical interventions are presented as progressive and so any scepticism or wish to inquire into their safety is misrepresented mm. as being right-wing and hateful. The other reason I think that we haven't had an inquiry in Australia is because the health officials are telling politicians that these kids will commit suicide if they don't get these treatments. Now, that is a false claim. It's a very widely used claim by gender clinics. Just recently, we've had the most comprehensive and rigorous study of gender dysphoria, transition and suicide, and it found that medical transition, which begins with puberty blockers, did not reduce suicide. 